What's going on my fellow rock and rollers? Now Guns N' Roses were the biggest band in the world in the early 90s, but following their epic two and a half year long User Illusion tour from 91 to 93, the band fell apart. The band would try to get together to write new material between 1994 and 1997, but they couldn't even write one complete song, which led to the departure of Slash in 1996 and bassist Duff McKagan and drummer Matt Sorum in 1997. It was really a combination of musical differences, business disagreements, and a revolving lineup that led to the dissolution of the classic lineup. Now, by 1998, Axl Rose was the last member of the classic lineup still standing, and he was now left to his own vices as he reassembled a completely new band from scratch and started to work on the band's highly anticipated Chinese Democracy record. Now, producers and band members would come and go, with former Nine Inch Nails producer Sean Bevan and Queen producer Roy Thomas Baker being linked to the record. It was also during this time that Axl Rose became a recluse, rarely making public appearances. But at the turn of the new millennium, Axl started to finally show off his new lineup of Guns N' Roses, with the band playing several shows in Vegas in 2000 and 2001, in addition to an appearance at Rock in Rio. Now as 2002 rolled around, the band launched a summer tour across Europe and played some shows in Asia. As the fall approached, the MTV VMAs were coming up, and the band was set to make an appearance closing out the show. Now, the band made several appearances at the VMAs in the past, most notably appearing in 1988, 1989, and 1992 with Elton John. Now, most people who weren't hardcore Guns N' Roses fans in 2002 either had no clue who was still in the band or whether they were still making music. Now, Axel's new lineup consisted of guitarist Buckethead, former Nine Inch Nails member Robin Fink, and current guitarist Richard Fortas. Also part of the lineup was punk bassist Tommy Stinson, drummer Brain, and keyboardist Chris Rock and Roll Pittman, as well as longtime member Dizzy Reed. Now, Guns N' Roses would close out the 2002 VMAs playing a medley of some of their biggest hits, including Welcome to the Jungle and Paradise City, while also throwing in a song off their long-awaited record Chinese Democracy with Madagascar. Now, Guns N' Roses performing at the VMA hadn't even been announced by the network ahead of time, so it came as a surprise to a lot of people. In the run-up to Guns N' Roses' performance at the VMAs that night, host Jimmy Fallon, who himself is a big GNR fan, teased the band's appearance wearing the band's shirt under his jacket and making a joke about the song Patience. Then came the time. Jimmy Fallon introduced the band, and while the group's name was familiar, the faces were not, including Rose. Gone was Rose's slim snake-like figure of the early days. Instead, he wore a baggy jersey possibly to hide some weight he's gained. He also had cornrows, and his face looked different as if he possibly had plastic surgery. In addition to that, it appeared that Rose had lost a lot of his rasp and his voice singing with a much cleaner tone, and some would compare his new voice to Mickey Mouse. Now, following that performance, the reaction was mostly poor. Axel's new appearance would dominate a lot of the discussion following the VMAs, and he would even be mocked by Saturday Night Live when Matt Damon impersonated the singer. Now, Axel had his own reasons for why the performance was so lackluster that night, been nervous, a nervous wreck all that day, huh? Well, no, I, I, I wasn't that, but everything tends to go wrong in my world. Like even going, <laughs> going to sound check, the police wouldn't let me down the street to go to the building. Is that right? And then the day of the show, they didn't let us go down the street. And I had to get out of the car, run past the police. They're telling me I have to stop, and I'm like, I gotta sing. <laughs> and the best part was as I'm running down the street. Um, I had to run past all the people lined up to get in the building. Right. And they're going, hey, there goes Kid Rock. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was pretty Now, cool. why wouldn't the police let you out? I'm, I'm kind of lost you on know, that. Just, they're lost. Huh. Just just confusion, lost, don't know what's going on, you know, people not having people's names on the list, not knowing what passes to check, all that kind of crap. So just usual stuff going wrong for no reason. So what you're telling me is Axl Rose had to sneak into the MTV Video Music Yeah, Awards. basically. I had, like, police <laughs> chasing me down the street. And, you know, and then the, our security and MTV had to, like, clear it with them. But, yeah, it was very interesting. Now, even his former bandmates, including Slash and Duff, would comment on the bizarre performance on MTV two years later when they appeared with their new band at the time, Velvet Revolver, on the Howard Stern Show. Well, I'm a big fan, but it does appear that Axel lost his hair and has some sort of hair weave and I have he no idea and his voice seems to have been affected by something it, it, it's not as strong and he looks like he had plastic surgery on his face oh dear <laughs> yeah, i didn't right? see any of it scott did he i don't know there's something going on with the eyebrow part yeah, on yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
I, I've been in the best seat in the house for, for three bands that I've been in, right? The Cult with Ian Asbury, great front man. Right. Axl Rose, right. great front great man. Great front man. Scott Weiland is the world's greatest rock and roll front man He right is great. Now. He is okay. great. Right. We've got Scott Weiland. No. Now, Guns N' Roses' appearance at the VMAs was to set the stage for them touring North America for the first time since 1993. The tour was set to begin in the fall and then run through the winter of 2002. The only problem was the tour was a disaster. The first show was set to take place in Vancouver, Canada. Axel was a no-show, and it ended in a riot. The band also had trouble selling out venues playing to half-empty arenas. In addition to that, Rose was still up to his usual antics, showing up hours late to gigs and ranting about whatever had upset him recently. The tour lasted about only 15 dates. Then there was yet another riot on the tour in Philadelphia. After Rose was apparently sick or busy watching a basketball game in his hotel room, forcing Clear Channel Broadcasting, who was backing the tour, to finally pull the plug. Guns N' Roses wouldn't tour for another four years, and fans wouldn't hear Chinese Democracy until six years later in 2008. So let me know your guys' thoughts on the new Guns N' Roses that appeared in 2001 and 2002, and what your thoughts were. Let me know in the comments section below, and if you guys have suggestions for future stories, let me know in the comments as well. Thanks for watching guys, be sure to hit the like button and subscribe. If you want to support my channel, simply watch another video, or go support us on Patreon at the link below. Take care.